We extend time gating to GRNNs to handle the problem of vanishing and exploding gradients. We discuss long range graph dependencies and the issue of vanishing and exploding gradients in space. We then introduce spatial gating strategies, namely node and edge gating, to address it. Similarly to RNNs, GRNNs can also experience the issue of vanishing exploding gradients when encoding long term dependencies of graph processes. In long term dependencies, gradients vanish when the eigenvalues of B of S, the state to state graph filter, are much smaller than 1, which in turn makes the weights B of S exponentially smaller. And they explode when the eigenvalues of B of S are much larger than 1, making the weights B of S exponentially larger. To address this issue, we do the same we did for RNNs, add a gating mechanism to GRNNs. As we will see in this video, GRNNs admit three different types of gating. So we define the gating mechanism in terms of generic operators Q hat of T and Q check of T. Q hat of T is the input gate operator, which acts on the input. Q check of T is the forget gate operator, which acts on the previous state. The input gate operator controls the importance of the input xt at time t. The forget gate operator controls how much to remember or forget from the previous state zt-1. Observe that neither operator changes the dimensions of the signals to which they are applied. The simplest type of gating in GRNNs is time gating. This is just an extension of the input and forget gates we discussed for RNNs. In the time-gated GRNN, the input and forget gate operators are expressed as follows. The input gate operator Q hat of T is parametrized by a scalar lowercase Q hat of T. The forget gate operator Q check of T is parametrized by a scalar lowercase Q check of T. These scalars multiply the filtered output and the filtered state respectively, and they both take values in the 0-1 interval. In time gating, a single scalar gate is applied to the whole graph signal, that is, the same gate value is applied to the signal components at all nodes. The input gate either attenuates the input or lets it all pass in the computation of the next state. Similarly, the forget gate either attenuates the previous state or lets it all pass in the computation of the next state. Even if the eigenvalues of the state-to-state -state graph filter are well behaved, certain spatial imbalances can cause gradients to vanish in space. That is, certain nodes or paths of the graph might get assigned more importance than others and long-range exchanges important for the task at hand. Examples of graphs for each which this can happen are graphs with some type of community structure where the nodes within a community are highly connected. As we know from the discussion about long-term dependencies in video 2, the gradients of the state ZT depend on successive products of the state-to-state -state graph filter B of S. But since B of S is a polynomial in the graph shift operator S, the gradients of ZT actually depend on successive products of S. Let capital T denote the duration of the graph process and consider the tth power of the shift operator S. When T is large, the matrix entries associated with highly connected communities will get densely populated. In other words, the subgraph corresponding to the community might become a complete graph where all nodes are connected to all nodes. This, in turn, overshadows the local structure of the community, making it harder to encode processes with long range dependencies that are local on that community of the graph. The issue of vanishing gradients in space can be solved by taking the node and edge structure of the graph into account in the gating mechanism. We refer to this as spatial gating. There are two strategies for spatial gating. The first one is node gating. In node gating, separate input and forget gates are applied to each node. For instance, consider the graph on the left with the signal defined on the nodes 2, 3, 4, and 9. Node gates allow gating each component of the signal independently. The components on nodes 2 and 3 pass, while those on 4 and 9 are attenuated. The second spatial gating strategy is edge gating. In edge gating, separate input and forget gates are applied to each edge. On the graph on the right, we do not consider graph signals defined on the edges, but the edge weights between 2 and 3, 7 and 8, 7 and 12, and 9 and 10 can be attenuated to limit node exchanges across these edges. By taking the node and edge structures of the graph into account, 
spatial gating strategies help encode long-range spatial dependencies in graph processes. We move on to formally defined node-gated GRNNs. In the node-gated GRNN, the input and forget gate operators are expressed as follows. The input gate operator q hat of t is parametrized by a vector lowercase q hat of t. The forget gate operator q check of t is parametrized by a vector lowercase q check of t. These correspond to multiplications of the filtered input and the filtered state by diagonal matrices, where the diagonals are the input gate vector q hat of t and the forget gate vector q check of t. Each component of these vectors takes values in the 0, 1 interval which make it, makes it so that a different scalar gate is applied to each nodal component of the signal. As for the edge-gated GRNN, the input and forget gate operators are expressed as follows. The input gate operator q hat of t is parametrized by a matrix q hat of t. The forget gate operator q check of t is parametrized by a matrix q check of t. The gating operation corresponds to element-wise multiplication of the graph shift operator by the n by n gate matrices q hat and q check of t, whose individual entries are values in the 0, 1 interval. Therefore, there is a separate scalar gate for each edge. By scaling the edge weights, edge gates control the amount of information transmitted across edges and local exchanges. In null gating strategies, the parameters of the input and forget gate operators are computed as the outputs of GRNNs themselves. This means that gated GRNNs actually consist of three GRNNs. The first is the one used to compute the main state CT. The other two are the GRNN used to compute the input gate state CT hat in blue, and the GRNN used to compute the forget gate state ZT check in green. The computation of the gating operator's parameters from the input gate state and the forget gate state takes different forms depending on the specific type of gating. In time gating, the scalar input gate q hat of t is computed by applying a fully connected layer c hat to the input gate state, followed by a sigmoid. And the scalar forget gate q check of t is computed by applying a fully connected layer c check to the forget gate state, also followed by a sigmoid. The sigmoid activation function is necessary to ensure that these gates take value in the 0, 1 interval. In the case of node gating, the vector input gate q hat of t is computed by applying a graph filter bank calligraphic c hat to the input gate state, followed by a sigmoid. And the vector forget gate q check of t is computed by applying a graph filter bank calligraphic c check to the forget gate state, also followed by a sigmoid. Here, too, the sigmoid ensures that the values of the gates at each node are between 0 and 1. In the case of edge gating, the computation of the gates is a bit more involved. A matrix C hat is applied to the input gate state to learn linear features. Then, for each edge ij, we isolate the features corresponding to the n nodes i and j by multiplying the feature vector by n-dimensional direct deltas centered at i and j respectively. The feature vectors corresponding to nodes i and j are then concatenated and passed through a fully connected layer lowercase c hat, which maps them to a scalar. Finally, this scalar is normalized by application of the sigmoid to produce the edge gate corresponding to the edge ij. Once this process is completed for all edges ij, the input gate matrix q hat of t can be constructed by assigning the ij gate edge gate to the ij matrix entry. Entries that do not correspond to edges of the graph are set to zero. The forget gate matrix Q check of T is computed analogously.